Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen. Today's gospel, we hear the theme of unbelief and a lack of repentance. Our Lord speaks against three Galilean towns that snubbed his call to repentance, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capharnaum. If you remember a couple of weeks, a couple of Sundays ago, we heard of Matthew chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, we heard of the rejection of Jesus at Nazareth. When our Lord came back to his hometown and he began his preaching and the people took offense at him, Mark says that they literally were scandalized by what Jesus said, Mark 6, verse 3. And St. Luke, in his recounting of the story, adds that they actually tried to throw Jesus off a cliff. We read about that in Luke 4, 19. And so Jesus wasn't able to perform any mighty deed among his people because of their lack of belief. We see that in Mark 6, verse 5. In today's gospel, there's actually the mention of Jesus' second hometown, which was Capernaum. In Matthew 4, verse 13, it says that Jesus left Nazareth and went and dwelt in Capernaum, and it became his chief residence when he was ministering to the people in Galilee. So certainly you think the people in Capernaum will recognize and welcome our Lord, right? Well, no, just like the Nazarenes, the people of Capernaum rejected him as well. As we mentioned uh, in our homily on Sunday, for those of you who were here uh, St. John's, we said, we know that God is omnipotent, that he's all-powerful by nature, but the one thing that God allows to hamstring his power is unbelief. And the response of Jesus to the unbelief of the people in the three Galilean towns today is a bit surprising, what he says. St. Matthew says that Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty works had been done since they had not repented, Matthew 11 verse 20. The Greek word that's used there for reproach is onetizo. It means to reproach, but it also means to upbraid, to revile, to curse, to mock, or to heap insult on someone. Pretty strong language there. So if you want to get our Lord angry, uh, refuse to respond to his call to repentance. The psalmist says, God is a just judge slow to anger, but he threatens the wicked every day, men who will not repent. Psalm 7, verse 11 and 12. So those cities in Galilee had the privilege every day to hear the words of our Lord, to see the deeds of the Messiah, but they really refused to take his message to heart. We know that we all have the responsibility to respond to God's call to repentance and conversion. As they say, with great privilege comes great responsibility. So if we have the privilege to hear our Lord's teaching, then we also have the responsibility to put his teaching into practice. Jesus even said on one occasion, he said, Why do you call me Lord, but do not do what I tell you? He said in Luke 6, verse 46. It's a fair question. Why do we say that he is God, but then we don't actually do what he tells us to do? As Catholics, we know we have the fullness of the faith and the fullness of tr the truth as well. But do we take that to heart? You know, do we actually put that into practice? Our Lord says, to whom much is given, much will be required. Luke 12, 48. So do we allow our Lord's teachings? Do we allow the sacraments? Do we allow prayer? Do we allow the crosses? that our Lord sends us? Do we allow all these things to really transform our minds and our hearts? That same Sunday, a couple of weeks ago, we heard of the rejection of Jesus at Nazareth. And in the first reading on that Sunday, we heard it from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, the Old Testament book, when God said to the prophet, he said, Son of man, I'm sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they whom I am sending to you. Ezekiel 2, verses 3 and 4. And as I said on uh, this past Sunday, I said if the Lord were to address those words to us, that he's sending us to people who are rebels and who are obstinate of heart, we might ask him to send someone else. Right? It might be better if he sent someone else. Uh, but it doesn't make a lot of sense when we think about it that God sends his prophets to his own people. 
So obviously God's people know him. They know the law of Moses. They know what's expected of them. So they, of course they're going to welcome God's prophets, right? Of course they will. In the Old Testament, very often, no, they rejected them. They'll welcome God's prophet if they're being faithful to God. It's a big if. If they're being faithful to the Lord, just like the people of Nazareth and of Capernaum and of Chorazin and Bethsaida, they would have welcomed Christ if they were open to God's call to conversion. If we were to go into, so a lot of this is a repeat from Sunday, so this is just a refresher for those of you who were at Mass at St. John's. Uh, if we were to go to any, into any parish in the U.S. and preach what the Catechism says on any of the Ten Commandments, uh, then of course everyone's going to listen to us and welcome our teaching and be grateful for it, right? Of course they will. Because uh, we're only reminding them of what the church teaches and believes. And so you think, well, it's a no-brainer. Everyone's going to be open to that, right? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Or if we were to go into any of the Catholic, various Catholic schools and universities and remind the teachers and faculty and students what the church teaches on the sanctity of marriage and the sanctity of life and the sanctity of human sexuality, uh, how do you think we would be received? in a lot of those schools. Now, if any of those schools were built on a cliff like Nazareth was, I'd probably be hesitant to go there. Uh, they'd probably have the cliff escort service ready for me before I even opened up my mouth. So some of these places really don't embrace God's call to conversion. They really don't take the gospel to heart, unfortunately. The heart and soul of the Christian life is repentance and conversion, continual repentance, continual conversion. Underneath the fiery words of our Lord in today's gospel, there is sadness. Sadness at our lack of faith. Sadness at our lack of conversion. So let's ask Our Lady for the grace to allow God to clean up the spiritual mess that's inside of us still so that we can receive praise from the Lord on the day of judgment rather than receiving reproaches as some of these cities will receive. Remember, the Lord is kind and merciful to those who seek him. So while we can, let's continue to seek the face of the Lord with humility, with a spirit of repentance. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen.